Today on Pay Dirt, we're gonna show you how to get started with just a small garden. I mean, anybody can do it. With this social distances we got going on now, I mean, and everybody's kind of staying around the house, I mean, this is a prime time to do it. It's rewarding to do because you, you plan and you actually reap the rewards for doing it and uh, save you from going to the grocery store. You know, this is just a small little garden here, but I mean, we're we gonna have tomatoes in it, put peppers in it, we're gonna plant a little bit of corn in it. Uh, and, and it's amazing, you, you know, what you can grow in this, this small of space. But uh, what you gotta do is get it, obviously get this soil ready to plant in. And so to do that, you know, the little walk behind tiller, you get them at Rural King, get your plants at Rural King, uh, and your seed at Rural King and uh, fertilizer. So, I mean, it's a one-stop shop to get everything you need for a small garden like this. Uh, and you get you a tiller like that, man, it makes it, makes it so easy. And uh, if you're like me, you know, you'd rather be in the turkey woods, but get you one of those little old tillers like that, and uh, it'll cut your time down unbelievably working in a garden. I mean, you can see this soil here. You want to loosen up and aerate that soil. This loosened soil here gives them roots an easy path, you know, to getting on down there and get your good root system established. And that's, you know, that's what really feeds feeds your plant is the root system. So you want to make sure you got that soil is it, is loosened up and not compacted, so them them plants will have a short enough easy growth. All right, we got these pepper plants here. First, we're going to plant and. Uh, it's pretty cool to use a pair of scissors. These, these little containers they come in, you know, you can, a lot of times you can pull them out, but then again, a lot of times you can't. So whenever you do try to get them out, you can, you, you know, you'll pull that, you'll pull that plant out of the root and leave some of this, this uh, soil in. So what you want to do is just, just clip it down the side right there. They pop out easy and you got your whole root ball right there ready to go in the ground. All right, we got our hole dug. What you want to do is just, you know, get it just maybe just a shade below where the stem comes out of your uh, root ball here. And then another little tip is to break this up. And that way it'll release those roots and uh, they'll really take off a lot faster than struggling trying to get out because they've been compacted up in that little old container. All right, I'm gonna get the rest of these planted and uh, we're gonna shoot right up the drive here. We got a neighbor that lives next door to us and uh, he's way ahead of us. He's already got his stuff planted, but we're a little behind, but the weather's still good. We're ready to get the rest of it in the ground. This week's feature property is a really cool track from Hardin County, Tennessee. This 99 acre track has so much to offer. Beautiful old growth hardwood make for a great place for the deer and turkeys to live year round and the cold meandering stream that goes right through the middle of the property make for a great place to water and really hold a lot of wildlife. The property is located in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and with the beautiful stream going through it, it makes for a beautiful setting. The track is good for hiking, hunting, ATV riding, or just a great place to get away from the hustle and bustle of the city and enjoy nature. So if you're interested in this property in Tennessee or any other properties like this anywhere in the country, you need to check out RealtreeUC.com today and let a Realtree Land Pro find you your dream property. All right, we're down here at my neighbor's Nate's garden. As you can see, he's a professional at it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's already got his all, all planted and got it laid out. 
You said you got corn over here. Yeah, I got corn back there. Just kind of roped it off because the kids will come walking around here. Don't want the kids to step on the corn, so I just kind of roped it off to keep them out. To be honest, I got you. So what you what you got right here? We here. got a uh, we got squash right here. We got tomatoes kind of in the middle area here, and then we got some jalapenos, some bell peppers, and the reason I this area right here in the afternoon gets a little bit more shade because of these pine trees and the squash they like the wet ground and uh, so and they like it to stay moist so since it gets shade I plant it on this side the tomatoes they like some sunlight I put them in the middle but I put the peppers on that end because that ends a little bit more it's got a little bit more uh, sunshine uh, later in the afternoons and it's a, little, a bit more drier and so with that being said it'll keep those peppers hot if you want hot peppers the more you water your pepper plants the less hot those peppers will be. So that's why I kind of kept on that end because I like my peppers hot. Well, see, I'd put water to them because I'm not a hot <laughs> yeah. But, uh, and, and I noticed too, you've got it spaced out. So uh, even when these tomatoes, everything starts growing, you can, that's one thing to keep in mind. You can get in and there and pick. So, you know, if you space it out enough, so you got to remember these, these things are going to get on up and get some size on it, especially tomatoes. They're going to get up, so uh, you want to be able to leave you enough room to get in there and be able to pick your tomatoes without, you know, stepping all over everything. How tall do you let your tomatoes get up before you put your basket? I let them get up about a foot tall or so. Um, that way, you know, if you get some wind um, or, or heavy rain, um, those plants, you know, they're, they're more likely to want to tip over once they, uh, once they get a rain like that. So once they get up about a foot tall, I like to put that basket around them. And I'll stay with them as those, pant, as those plants continue to grow, you're gonna have to go back out and reposition those limbs. You might, as they go up to the next run on the, on the tomato basket, you need to take those limbs of, the, of your tomato plants and reposition them. I'll tell you one good thing about having a neighbor that's got a great garden like this, is you know, we, we kind of swap out things. So, uh, you know, that's a good thing to coordinate with your neighbors or, or your buddies, uh, whatever they're growing. If you, if, if you want to plant more of one thing and them more of another thing, and uh, you can kind of swap out whatever, whatever coming on, you know, you can swap it out when it's all, because it's all, all going to come at the same time. So then you can have your fresh stuff, you know, all, the, all summer long. Nate, I appreciate you showing everybody your garden. And, you know, as people can see, you had not got to have a great amount of space to really create a nice garden like this and really produce some food for you. That's right.